So Tottenham are our best bet. Fulham are not strong enough, not enough incentive to play. Uh, West Ham, West Ham also. I don't know. I feel I feel a little bit of West Ham too. Hey, AJ, the question to you is, what do Arsenal have to do to win the league? Like, what do they have to do? What more can they do? Go go out on a pilgrimage. Uh, <laughs> go visit all the deities and gods and goddesses that there are. Pray twenty four seven that City loses points or like something happens. <laughs> like I don't know. There's, there's nothing we can. Do. There's nothing we can do. The best thing we can do is just beat United uh, and yeah. finish the season on a high. That's all we can do, and I think we will do that. And I'm I'm proud of this team. Like ten ten games ago, if if I had seen the fixture list and I'm in Premier League, and uh, I had seen like and if you somebody get, told me that we only lose one points and win the nine rest nine. I would take it, man. Like it was as what Aston Villa, United, Tottenham away, uh, mm-hmm. with a lot of Brighton and like a lot of all the other fixtures crammed in. I would take it. So yeah, yeah. it is what it is. Avinov knows the pain. Maybe we will know that too at the end. I know the pain very dearly and very closely, so it, uh, that's never going to go away. But at least for the sake of this season, let the narrative not be that United knocked both Arsenal and Liverpool out of the title <laughs> race. I really do not want that. I mean, okay, it's fine. I'm, I kind of made peace with it. It's fine. It, it happened at Old Trafford, but let Old Trafford not be the place where uh, you'll say, okay, we have stopped United. Uh, li- exactly, we stopped uh, Liverpool winning the league. We stopped Arsenal winning the league here. I don't know. They're going to derive some sort of sadistic pleasure out of it, and I think that's what. And that's going to be the lasting feeling to going into the break uh, after the 38 games. So please yeah. win it, Old Trafford, and satisfaction. <laughs> up enough, up enough. Let me tell you something. Look at Sid right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Look at exactly. You, know, you, you see I'm that smile. You see the smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the, this is the last body smiling, in, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> that won't happen. Whatever you said won't happen. <laughs> All these smiles let are him, empty. Let him smile, worry. let him giggle, let him do all he wants, let him sell his soul to the uh, city rivals. Because obviously, the noisy neighbors has have painted the city blue, so they have nothing else to root for. So let them root for city, yeah. and we'll come to United, <laughs> and we'll see uh, what they have for us. Yeah, but AJ, uh, where do you think City can actually lose? Like, if you have to give a shout to any team, there is. So there is Fulham away, there is West Ham at home, and then there is Spurs away. These three, all London, all London teams. Yeah. Who is going to do Arsenal a favor? According to you, Fulham is my best bet. Iwobi, let's go, Hayland. Uh, Mikel Antonio came out and said that if it were to go to the out of the last weekend, they will give it their all. I don't believe that dude. That dude is just does anything for the clicks. But uh, but yeah, I mean, like, not that they can. It's in their hands. City needs to have an off day, basically. And you know, uh, yeah. twenty. I don't know if you guys watch Formula One, but 2021 uh, Formula One Abu Dhabi uh, Red Bull's team principal literally came on and said that we need racing gods to be in our favor, uh, mm-hmm. and we are in a situation where we need footballing gods to be in our favor. We need a we need something out of the ordinary to win it. So Fulham yeah. is my best bet. Tottenham, I don't I don't think I think they'll fold. I think they they won't fold. They just are not capable of beating City. So yeah, uh, yeah. And if you're if you're really betting on uh, Michael Antonio or someone from STM doing the same thing, I remember a very similar situation in 1314. Uh, our last game was Liverpool Newcastle, and I think it's at City again West Ham, same team. And we had Stuart Downing and Andy Carroll playing for West Ham at that point of time, and we were thinking they'll they're going to do us a favor or something on the last day. Something some god is going to bless us with something and erase this memory of Gerard slip completely, but. That didn't happen, so <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. To, I'm very pessimistic at this point because I was hoping at least there will be some. Because Wolves actually were having a good season this se- you know, the entire season. I think they were capable capable of at least getting an odd goal or two. But by the time they got one goal, City are all already four ahead, and Haaland is kind of back to his robotic self. So again, but, you can you can think of gods and everything, but you're playing with robots here, so there is nothing you but, can do at this point of time. Nothing that is, is going to happen. Bro. City is a juggernaut. They will not be stopped. I mean, Spurs have nothing in them left. They have no incentive to win. They don't want their rivals, Arsenal, to lift the trophy at all if they beat City. So there's like zero incentive why even Spurs will put their best foot in the front. So, so here's the here's the counter narrative, right? First of all, the footballing goals that I talk about, 
were in mm-hmm. city's favor when gerard slipped that's literally a footballing god moment where in like you know you just it, you just never would see it but it happened in the most crucial of matches against chelsea where you, they know that they won't miss it so that's one but on the counter if you look at spurs dude the way they started they if you remember they had like what 26 points out of 10 games and then right now they have 30 they basically got 34 out of 20 next 24 games right so ange is under tremendous pressure and mm-hmm. he has he has this possibility of if they lose to liverpool uh, they might just fall out of europe or they might just go into conference which is like a disaster if you look at it from the starting starting of the season standpoint right so i think they will have something to play for plus they'll be at home uh and there is some chance there is some hope don't really expect it but uh, yeah all we can do is hope right this is an enemy i have a tantric puja that's happening right now <laughs> <laughs> it is the i've already started it <laughs> yeah <laughs> if, if if you have to ask me which where do i feel city are going to lose point it has to be tottenham right because um just the way Ange plays football, and uh, the way that Tottenham have been losing games, and just like his overall reputation is uh, in a stranglehold right now. So uh, he has to he has to put in a performance. They have to put in a performance against City. If they fold against City, they will just become a laughing stock for the Premier League. Like literally, uh, it's it's they 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 have lost the last three games. They're probably going to lose at Anfield. Um, after that they i think they have sheffield no 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 they're definitely going to lose at anfield it's the second last no. Uh, no. home game for club and then Bro, maybe. they no 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 they're going to lose at anfield and then it's city so basically they they'll be probably the first team to lose six games in a row if that it comes to that i don't remember any team any top team who have lost that so it will be a yeah. point where they will have to get a result and they want players and managers are never going to think about who's winning the league for them everyone's a competition fans are different fans definitely yeah. are different mm-hmm. but for them they're not going to fold like that so tottenham are our best bet fulham are not strong enough not enough incentive to play uh west ham west ham also i don't know i feel i feel a little bit of west ham too yeah. um i mean but so there's another another thing right which we all are conveniently forgetting is that they play three crucial games where they have to win all three games in a span of 7 days i know it's city i know they've done it before and all of those things that comes with it but it's still they play on saturday bro Wednesday, they don't lose saturday. any game ever that's the thing i mean right? this is that's what i'm saying like if if it's like a 36 game winning or like not losing streak yeah. right and if they hmm. they can do that then they can do that then nobody can nobody deserves to beat them they deserve to win so yeah but all we can do is like you know hope on tottenham man literally no, are in literally are between a rock and a hard place here <laughs> hoping for tottenham to win to qualify for champions league versus winning us <laughs> Okay, say so wait. Uh, so the the incentive for Tottenham to win against City is that they don't fall into the Conference League places, right? Or they yeah. might qualify for Champions League given how Arsenal. Champions League now do. how? I mean, I think they're like they won't qualify. Like, they won't qualify right? Arsenal has yeah. sixty seven points. I mean, they mm-hmm. have okay three. Even if Arsenal will lose to Liverpool, another okay qualifying to Champions League is a far shot, but falling into the Conference League probably is is more realistic. given where they are and we yeah, are thinking yeah. the incentive is that they should win against city so that they don't fall into conference league but what are the other teams though like i think i think they are banked for fifth man I, they're almost at the beach is what i'm trying to say because newcastle they won today uh, they played one more game they're still four points adrift united is united leave that chelsea far shot so they their europa league status is confirmed more or less at this point yeah they can play for pride and they can make sure you know do whatever but i i don't think there's much of an incentive for tottenham to win against city so that they don't fall into conference league i just feel like tot or uh, aston villa again again <coughs> building yeah, i mean if they're up, going why for not? Yeah. why not uh, so aston villa kind of like lost the first leg uh if they lose the second leg or even if they don't they pr- probably will go all out for it given that mm-hmm. they might think that okay you know we can lose one game in premier league and still be fine but okay, then that okay. losing momentum carries on to the mm-hmm. rest of the time right because the pressure piles up for example they went all in in the second leg and they lost because they're two goals down now against olympiakos right, right. mm-hmm. uh and then they come back they're not they're knackered they're not up for it they might lose in the premier league and then they're just one point behind tottenham mm-hmm. 
and that kind of like builds up the pressure right because you're yeah, like yeah. okay now we might get it on the flip side on the flip side if tottenham lose to liverpool they're just 3 points mm-hmm. behind united and if they lose to city as well uh chelsea united newcastle or are on their coattails exactly and like newcastle so, has it's been a, it's a very such... dynamic league a stable at this point of time you can't just say that they won't that that, that game wouldn't matter to tottenham given how <laughs> the table would pan out in the next few, two two games mm-hmm. okay and newcastle has been in such great form like they won the last two games with like three or four goals each uh in hand and i think like they just have like united coming up which is going to be an easy game for them to win as well so newcastle is very very like hot on the tails of tottenham they're just like four four points down but then fifth fifth and sixth what's the difference yeah here? so sixth is conference yeah. right that's the thing we're debating sixth is not how bad is Sixth, Wait, sixth is not conference. Sixth still is Europa League, Fifth right? And sixth is Europa League. Seventh is conference. That's how it works. If if United if United win the FA Cup, then it might mm-hmm. just be sixth. Might just be conference. Yeah, it's possible. Right. Oh, so it's okay. a possibility. Okay. I mean, it's Football possible. is showing if, if sixth is conference. If aliens land on Earth, yeah. <laughs> if we if we ever discover <laughs> if, if we ever discover <laughs> that Hudson went dry, yeah. Satan's <laughs> so not smiling now. <laughs> Holy bro, it won't be one last time. All my smiles are empty. Don't. Yeah. He's using them all right now so that you know he can't. He, he knows he yeah. won't get a chance to use them later. So hope is there. Never mind. Hope is there. I've heard. I've heard that hope is there. Uh, City might lose to Tottenham. City might lose to West Ham. City might lose to uh, Fulham. Fulham. Arsenal might lose. Arsenal to United. might lose to United. Arsenal yes. are beating Everton. <laughs> For sure, <laughs> that is okay. the only fixture so, left. Where I'm sure. Everton, okay, dude, against Everton, Sean Dykes himself will play. He'll be like, I'm done. I just want to play again. Just, <laughs> so just imagine, just imagine Arsenal. Um, basically, City lose to Tottenham, and Arsenal go into the last day of the season. Everyone's coming. You know, it's at the Emirates, and we're gonna win the league. And then we lose to a Dwight McNeil one nil header in the 95th minute. Beautiful. So we'll pay them off. Don't worry, we'll pay them off. We'll we'll, we'll do everything we can. We'll get rid them of their FFP issues. Don't worry. If if it comes to that, we are winning. Okay. <laughs> tell me, tell That's... me, what's the worst narrative? Right, losing at old, losing the league at Old Trafford, or losing the league to Unai Emery at Emirates. <laughs> Don't think the latter is the narrative. I think the former no, but... might be, which would be worse than anything else in the world. It's not. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Emery has already happened. He's already like shown no, us because... that place. No, but with Unai Emery, it's like we've won fourteen out of sixteen games up until now, and probably win sixteen out of eighteen by the end of the season. So you can't do much better than that. So Unai Emery is not a narrative. Old Trafford mm-hmm. would be <laughs> definitely. I mean, the <laughs> the only game you lost this year was against the manager that you, that you sacked. So like that is a narrative. You can't. See, people will make it. up those narratives no matter what, right? So exactly. that's going to happen. United, United fans talk. They know there's a big alien coming against Crystal Palace. They'll still <laughs> yap around. So <laughs> that's all we have left, right? <laughs> we, Bro, we have nothing me, to lose. Listen, listen, listen. We, I'm telling you, let's do a truce. You literally pray for us to win. And if we win, I am telling you, I am all on your side to win the FA Cup. Like, let the Baldy go without a trophy this season. Let's make it happen. I mean, I see it as a win-win for you, anyways. How it's a win-lose for me and a win-win for you. How does that work, bro? Because if we are losing, then you are definitely losing the FA Cup. So the trophy needs here. I I don't think uh, we have a shot, anyways, in the FA Cup, no matter okay. what okay. happens. Fair, 